Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is an unboxing video of a different kind. I have miniatures here. Lots and lots of miniatures we're going to be going through, and I'm realizing I did not put these away for my play of Tenaris Adventures, which means that's going to deal with later. Anyways, we have a bunch of miniatures over here. These are going to be um, Wild Ascent miniatures. I don't know if we got big guys, small guys, all the kinds of guys, but these are going to be miniatures, final copies from Wild Descent. I shouldn't say final, uh, pre-production, something. They're at some level of production. I'll get the official terminology. Miniatures go through so many different stages of production, from prototype to, like, you know, the red wax, to the pre-production, to the, the um, there's a term I'm forgetting. There's the um, the proofs or the something, I don't remember. And then, of course, there's the final ones you get in the game. There's, like, four, five, six different steps miniatures go through from when they're initially concepted out to the various stages of production until they arrive in your box. I think these are like the final-ish step, but again, I'm blanking on the name. Either way, these are from Wild Descent. This is sort of an unboxing. I do got my coffee. I do got my knife because I'm going to need the knife to open up all the various little packages. But basically, this is the miniatures. This is a miniature thing from, from Wild Descent. If that's interesting to you, keep on watching. If it's not interesting to you, keep on watching, I guess. I am almost done with my coffee, so that's not going to last very long. But let's go ahead and grab one of these bags over here. And we are going to go through these and start opening these up over here. This is going to be a mess. I'm going to maybe break things. I don't know. I tend to not be the best with miniatures over here, but in just in terms of handling them, I don't go through the full level of care. I also don't break many miniatures. You know, uh, IV Games, if they're Mythic Mischief, would beg to defer with that. But in general, I don't break many miniatures. Maybe I do break. If it's a prototype, maybe I do. I'm casual with them. I, I Final miniatures, I don't break very often. Like, very, very infrequently. My kids break them more than me, and that's still infrequent. Anyways, we're going to do our first miniature over here. So, this is for Wild Descent. Wild Descent is a game I really enjoy. Wild Descent is a game that I would love to... Uh, I've been planning on diving back into it in general, and the only question, as always, is when is Levon Rising coming, and do I care enough to wait before diving back into it? I've given Wild Descent uh, one and a half playthroughs, just to be clear, not one and a half sessions, one and a half playthroughs of the full campaign, so I've played, like, maybe 14, 15 plays, a 10 for the campaign, and then an additional four or five outside of the campaign. And overall, I definitely very much enjoy it. I've been very much a fan of it, and I've talked to much a fan of am of it. And I do think the game definitely gets significantly better as you go through it, as you like go through the game. And let's just line these up so they're a little bit on camera. As you go through the experience, I think the game experience improves. I mean, the first session of Wild Descent, I don't think showcases how good the game is because you haven't started to build out your characters and develop them the way you want to develop them. Uh, it's a game that when I first played, I was like, this is good. And then as I continue to play into it, I was like, more and more, this is amazing and I love it. I think if I recall correctly, and this is going back quite a bit, but I recall correctly, I think it was my third game of Wild Descent that I was like, I'm locked in, I'm here, and after the third game, like the end of the third game, I was like, this is where this is where I'm at with this game. And it just, it grew on me. I was like, good game, better game, I love this game. So it does take a little bit of time. I mean, if you're someone who thought Wild Descent wasn't for you, and you bounced off it after one game, first of all, I respect that. I bounce off of many things after one play, and I don't feel that I need to get something more than one play, unless I'm reviewing it, different conversation. But if I'm playing it for myself, if I don't like it the first play, I often move on from it. So no judgment. But also, I will say for myself, the first play I liked. I didn't dislike it. That's another relevant point, too. If you disliked it after one play, that's that's one thing. But I'm saying I enjoyed my first play, but I was certainly not captivated by it. Yeah. So if you didn't like your first play of Wild Descent, maybe it's not a game that's for you. If you liked your first play, but weren't totally captivated, it may be worth giving it a shot. Although if you already sold it or traded or something, I highly doubt it's worth the effort to track down at that point. We have this person over here who looks a little more hunched over. No, I can see how this works. I can see. First, I was going to say that she looks too hunched over for the miniature pose, but she got a stake on her back. Now, if this were like on the uh, Game Found page or whatever page, then we'd have like delightfully amusing captions following every single miniature. I'm not that witty, so we're going to just go ahead and just talk through things. In general, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Robert, the, uh, Robert, oh my gosh, uh, he, he, on his, on the GameFound pages or whatnot, he, or, on Kickstarter crowdfunding, I think it's the GameFound right now, I'm saying, in terms of his general updates, he likes to be very humorous and give captions to everything, which is why I'm referencing that. We have this guy over here, and apologies if I don't remember, like, any of their names, it has been, I want to say, whoop, Q, thing I said about how I'm not careful with miniatures, this is definitely not a resin prototype, we now know that, but, uh, what I said, what I've said, I think the last time I played Wild Ascent was probably, I want to say September-ish, so nine months ago was probably my last play of the game, but I, it's been a while, so I don't remember all the characters. I do like this. I like this. Lots of stuff over here. Lots of fun things. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. This is a whole extra set of miniatures. Ooh, do I give this away? I'm not promising anything. I'm not promising anything. If I do a giveaway, I'll announce it in a separate video, because I don't know if I have authority to give this away. I don't need painting. I might hold on to it. 
Anyways, this gives me the freedom to potentially paint some of my stuff without worrying about risking it. And I like Wild Ascent, like a lot. I think that it gives you that, so I really like this miniature. This miniature is a lot of fun. But I like the game a lot. It gives you that it gives you that sense of campaign play without being overbearing, which is something I've really been enjoying more and more. I enjoy shorter accessible campaigns uh, because they're shorter and accessible. I like I like Stalker right now. Stalker is the most recent one from Awakened Realms. Uh, diving to that one, I like the fact that it's an eight to twelve hour campaign. It's not overbearing. Even while the sense probably close to around fifteen hours because it's ten games and it's probably been an hour and a half per session or whatnot. This guy I like over here, he's a little like a, a dummy character. I can't remember. He's not the lazy squire. I don't think so. He's a training dummy. But it's very cute. I really enjoy it. I don't think it's actually a full character, but I do enjoy the miniature. By the way, these sculpts are fantastic, just for the record. Like, you can hopefully see the details that go through them. It does seem like there's larger stuff on the bottom. Do I have my dragon back? Do I have my dragon back? I am excited about the prospect of having my dragon back. Now, we are going to have a few um, enemy miniatures over here. Oh, these have grown up. These guys are bigger than they used to be. Oh, wait, that one's different. That one's different. We've got some different stuff over here. We're going to go ahead and show you some of these. These are just going to be all the same. So these three, all the same. I'm just going to show you uh, two of them. Just one of them. I don't know why I'd show you two of them. I'll show you one of them. This looks to be a slightly bigger version of the ones last time. Like there's this creatures, there's a few creatures that kind of spawn minions in the game. Generally in Wild Ascent, if you don't know much about it, you're, you're seekers and you're out in the wilds hunting down various creatures to capture or kill. Uh, killing them is going to grant you various materials you could use for crafting. Capturing them is going to grant you money, which is essential to improving this element. The problem is... Capturing them is hard, and it's very hard to capture more than one or two per mission. It's, it's doable, but it's hard. Let's got another guy over here. So you're hunting down, generally, generally it's going to be four creatures you're hunting or killing in every scenario, generally. And then to that end, you are going to be, words, you have like your hunters or seekers or whatever, and they're going to be hunting down various enemies, and, and to that end, they're usually single sculpts. But sometimes there are various creatures that generate spawn, so that's one of them that generates spawn over there, uh, which like, I'm pretty sure, like I remember that creature. Ooh, we have this one. This guy's bigger than he used to be. He's gotten all big. He's gotten much bigger. That's so fascinating. So, just for like comparison purposes, we have a hero and we have this guy. So this guy, I don't know if you recall this guy in the past, but he always seemed hero sized. He was a very cool miniature. I always appreciated like the hands, the separate hands, and the way he's kind of floating over there. But he used to be like a little more hero sized, and he's gotten all bigger. He's bulked up. He's been working on those on those gains. You know, like he's he's been he's been doing what he's got to be doing. I'm not working on the gains. Also, what does arm lifting even look like when your arms are separated? That's, honestly, this goes back to the caption thing. This is the kind of thing where on a caption, he'd probably say something like, you know, hey, he's got some bigger, he's been really working on them gains. Not entirely sure how with those arms, though. Like, that's the kind of clever, like, thing. Not to say I'm clever, I'm, like, minimally clever. But that's, like, I, he has that kind of clever thing going on. Also, there's a fly in the basement, so, uh, if I randomly just go like that, it, it's a fly. This time, there was nothing, that was nothing. Okay, we got another character over here. This is, um, oh, oh, whoa, 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 be careful. Almost threw that out. We're going to have to go through this. These are all safe. I just patted my hand on them. We have two characters. I remember these guys. Okay. At least I think I remember them. They look familiar. But that could just be from the game found page. But anyways, I guess the point is there's there's a few reasons to think while the sense is a game that's not for you. The first is if you played it once and were not overly enthralled and decided that, you know what, you don't need to give it more time. I respect that. That was probably my experience. I just gave it more time and like it a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. But I don't expect you to do that. I mean, not even from a sense of, like, obviously I have no control over anything you do whatsoever, and you should be very, very wary of having a uh, board game YouTuber in any way tell you what to do. But there's a difference between telling what to do versus giving advice and opinions and uh, whatever. And so there is the advice aspect. I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying I'm not even giving you the advice to play it more. I'm saying if you are compelled enough by the potential promise of what it has to offer to play it more, do so. And if you're not, don't do so. There are so many games I will not give a second play. And I would say most of the time, most of the time when I don't like a game after play one, and again, there's a difference though. There's a difference between not liking versus being okay with. I was I was okay with Wild Ascent Game 1. Yeah, there's a difference. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would say this. Here's the real question. If I wasn't reviewing Wild Ascent, would I have played it Game 2? I don't think I would have. I'm very particular about my games. I don't think I would have given a second play. When I'm reviewing a game, there is an additional degree of responsibility towards, well, you, uh, and, well, and the publisher as well. And so... I do find that sometimes I will click with a game on that second or third game more than I did. I think after game two, I would have already. Game two, I was already more invested. But I think that that additional responsibility has made me like games and seek out games and enjoy games that I wouldn't have otherwise done so. And so 
that's a pro and a con, but I think for the most part, that second play doesn't change my mind. I think usually what I'm, what I feel after play one is usually what I feel after play two and three. I would say 95% of the time it remains the same, but one out of 20 games changing is still one out of 20 games changing. Like I review a lot of games a year and the amount of games that I'll sit there and say, you know what? Game one didn't really do it for me, but game two and three kind of locked it in. That does happen. Ironically, it happened with Primal 2. Primal is a, one of my favorite games as well, and that happened with that game as well. Now I want to go through like my favorite games and see how many of my favorite games showed their promise after game two. Now, now that's my personal journey and rabbit hole we're going to go down. I'm going to go through my top 20 games of all time and figure out how many of them my opinion changed after game one. I'm just going to do a bunch right now. Terraforming Mars, I loved my first play. Cthulhu Left My Die, I loved my first play. Uh, Too Many Bones, I loved my first play. Lost Wings of Arnak, I loved my first play. I'm trying to remember what's my top 10. Rurik, I loved my first play. Vindication, I loved my first play. Gloomhaven took a little bit of time. Gloomhaven took a little bit of time. I think that I enjoyed my first play, but I needed more time to lock that in, so we're back down to 6. I'm just thinking of my top 10 of all time. These are either my top 10 or top 15. I don't remember all my top 10. Crokinole, I loved my first play. So I think I think majority of the games that I love, I love my first play. I'd have to think through I'd have to like really go through my top ten. I don't remember all of them offhand. I got I think I think I got like seven of them right there, but I could be wrong. Lost Wings of Arnak, Gloomhaven, Too Many Bones, Cthulhu Left May Die, Terraforming Mars. I don't remember the upper edges of my top ten. Either way, moving on. So anyways, point is that uh Sometimes you find things when you keep playing stuff that just happen. Oh, we got the little flower dude. The little flower dude. Here, I showed you this guy. Did I show you this guy? I don't remember anymore, so I'm going to show you it again in case I didn't. He's a fairly famous sculpt from the Wild Descent universe, and they're all upgraded in small ways. Like, I don't remember that tail being as prominent. It's not really a tail so much like a rope or cape or whatnot. We got this little dude. Look at the little flower. You're going to have to murder it, just for the record. And I'm pretty sure he's one of a bunch, but you're definitely going to have to murder it as far as um the, the threat that they represent. Anyways... Going back to things, what things were we up to? So we're talking about Wild Descent, we're talking about enjoying games after multiple plays, or locking this in, I remember this character for sure. I like her a lot. I usually just jump around the board and kind of like inflict, if I recall correctly, she has an ability that if she shoots you from the back, I mean in general if you shoot people from the back you get an extra perk, but I have these memories of her shooting people from the back, so either it's just incidentally I happened to do that, or there was a tactical reason because of her abilities to try to do that. Or maybe she is the character that flipped, maybe she's the character that flipped. I'd have to look at my box, it's somewhere behind me over here. This guy looks nice and big and hulky. I don't remember him from the first box, but again, could be wrong. I didn't play with all the characters. It would be very, very hard, very, very hard to play with all the characters. But what other shorter campaign games do I enjoy? So I'm trying to think now. Shorter campaign games, accessible campaign games. Uh, we got Wild Ascent. We got Primal. We got Stalker. Um, that might be it. Like, what do we have as far as shorter campaign games? Something that you can dive into and play and not be bogged down. Because there's a lot of longer campaigns. Roleplay Adventures are arguably shorter. Dice Stone Adventures are shorter. But I think both those Roleplay Adventures, I don't think I'm going to play again. And Dice Stone, I might play with the expansion. But I don't think I'd ever play Roleplay Adventures again. I enjoy it, but I don't enjoy it enough to go through the sequence again. I think there is replayability. The problem, I mean, there's replayability to the story aspects and the story beats. The problem is the gameplay itself, I found repetitive as you got towards the end of the arc. Great game. Had a lot of fun with it, but it's one of those games where I definitely enjoyed it to a large extent. It kind of, my enjoyment was like here, went up to like here, and then like slowly moved down. It's still a great game. I still recommend it, but it definitely moved down. We got a little flower guy. I'm not going to show you him again because we, we showed you it. And we may have another little flower guy. A little flower guy. He's, he's gone over there. Anyways. Yeah, this gives me an opportunity to paint things. Masters. Is that the word I'm looking for? Masters? Like the pr production stuff? These Are these masters? I don't remember. I like this guy over here. Anyways, oh, by the way, I probably should say this early in the video. That's probably one of those things that you really should say. But uh, pre-orders for this, or late pledges, I should say, close July 15th, I want to say. So um, I'll throw a link and all that stuff down below. But pre-orders close July 15th. This is not a sponsored video. This is, I've liked Wild... I'm, I'm one of Wild Descent's biggest fans in the, I don't know, the, the, the YouTuber board game space. And so uh, they're, I'm being sent these because I like the game, and I'm going to talk positively about the game. I'm also going to talk about anything because... This is an unboxing and rambling to an extent. Here we go. Here's the Lazy Squire. Also, I have something in my eye again. I have this thing with my eye. Let's talk about this thing with my eye, because I don't know if you know this about me. I may have mentioned it in past videos. I don't know. But here we got the Lazy Squire. And he's actually... This is actually incorrect. I kind of take offense to this. This is not the Lazy Squire. This is the Tired Squire. Also, I think it's the Lazy Squire. It might not be. But if this is the Lazy Squire miniature, he's not lazy. He's tired. Lazy people aren't yawning because of how tired they are. Lazy people are just not doing things. So... Again, my eye. My eye, give me a second here. Just loose, loose touching of the eye. We'll explain more about the eye situation in a second. I'll explain. 
Anyways. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. But anyways, lazy people. No, nope, not good. I'm mean, careful. I can't rub too hard. You'll, I'll get to it soon. But yeah, if you're tired, it's not the same as lazy at all. It's a totally different category, and I take offense to that. But the leeway I'll grant them is how do you know something is... Ooh. I didn't know we got surprises in here. We got surprises. This is going back in the box. For now. It's coming out later. But... Um, lazy people are not the same as tired people, but I understand that you can't otherwise portray, how do you portray someone lazy? They would just look normal, so I don't see a way to do that. These are all sculpts we've had before, so we're just going to put them down over here in our pile of little miniatures that are going to be uh, dealing with you on the battlefield. Then we're going to keep going through things because we got some fun surprises in this box, we got some fun surprises in this box, we're going to keep these hidden right now off the side. Going back to the eye situation, because I do want to talk about the eye situation. So, the eye situation. No, he's one of the core heroes. He's one of, like, I think he's one of the heroes I, uh, Graxus? Is that his name? Is his name Graxus? If his name is Graxus, I'm proud of myself, because I, I haven't played this in a long time, but if his name is Graxus, please, please, please be his name. His name should be Graxus. I want to, like, look it up, and my phone's over there. My phone is right over there. This is a solvable problem. I want to find out if I'm right. Dun, dun. Let's go to Graxus while the scent. Just Google that. Graxus. Graxus. Nope, Graxus, two X's, Wild Ascent. Okay, is there a Graxus character? No, no, no. Oh my gosh, Wild Ascent. Ah! Okay, anyway, I see a picture over here. No, that character is Zaxos. Okay, I had the X in my head. I'm disappointed in me. His name is Zaxos, not Grathus. That that makes me feel bad. That makes me feel bad. I thought I, I thought I remembered it. It felt so familiar. Anyways, let's talk about the eye. So, I have this corneal tear, okay, which sounds bad and it really does sound bad. It's a corneal tear. Oh my gosh, we got different layers. I don't I don't know if there's gonna be a giant dragon situation here. We'll find out. That's just layer two. What do we have in here? Ooh, we got discs, we got discs, we got like thingies, bases. Ooh, oh. I should pay more attention to the things I'm told. I think I knew this already. So we're going to have various bases over here with indicators on your characters. So what you do over here is you take this, you can see the kind of the, the way there's holes in this, and you put it down on top of there, and then ta-da, you now have a character with a miniature base to indicate its facing. So you have that there, I don't know if you can see that as well. You see the facing. Now you know which way he's facing on the base. You have the enemies too, because the enemies also have these holes over there. And you just pop it down there, and then we well, got to just give a little bit of top pop in. Oh, I like this. I like this system. I knew this was coming. I just forgot. So you see his base. I like this. Look at them. You can see, like, good guy, bad guy. Because one of the complaints Wild Descent has gotten is that, and I wonder if paint would affect that, is that you can't really always tell who's who on the battlefield, at least until you get to know your own characters, like Graxus, who I now know is a good old friend. But, basically, this the painting part I'm wondering about, I'm wondering if you paint this miniature, will paint on the bottom, if you paint the bottom, cause this to not be as good of a fit. You can test that yourself and figure it out. But I do like it. I do like it. We got all these little thingies over here. And the funny part is, when you look at the pile, it kind of instinctively looks like there's um rough edges. That pointer, I think the pointer could be possibly, and I don't know if it's too late for a production thing, but I think this pointer could possibly be a drop more pronounced. Like, I, I don't think too much more pronounced. Like, I think too much pronounced and it would look bad on the battlefield. But I think, like, that could be, like, I don't know, 30% bigger and would probably still be, like, small enough to be good. But I don't know if it's still too late to make changes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, we got these, which we're now going to push up to the side because I'm not going to be uh, assembling all of them, but I like the system. We also got more. Ooh, we got big ones. Does that mean we have big miniatures coming? I hope this means we have big miniatures coming, because we got big ones of these. I'm excited. We should take out two big ones, and we're going to save this for the promise of things to come. So, my corneal tier. I have a corneal tier. Ooh, I'm sorry. This is going to be the most distracting conversation ever. We have our phoenix, who is cooler than the old phoenix. He's got more wings. And twice as many wings, twice as good. You know, it's just... Look at that, though. Look at the miniature quality. I'm sorry. These are definitely not being given away. I'm definitely using these for painting, because this is the coolest thing ever. Look at this guy. Look at... Just admire how cool he is with your non-corneal tier eye. Look at those bases. This is just so cool. I like this game. I like this game. Not because of the miniatures, because of the gameplay, but I like this game. A little bit because of the miniatures. Anyways, corneal tier. Maybe four years ago, I have two issues that are worth talking about. I mean, worth is a relative term. This is just me talking to you about my personal health issues. But is this going in? Oh, 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 oh. Are there three sizes? There are three sizes. Okay, there we go. I was trying to put the wrong size on. 
And now we are good to go with our little base over here. And you now know facing and teammate. Ta-da! Anyways, around three years ago, longer than that, maybe four years ago, maybe five, I don't know. A decent amount of time ago, but not super long time ago, I got something in my eye. I was rubbing around, I, I don't remember what happened, but I just, my eye got something in it, and I was rubbing and rubbing, and again, it was getting worse, and I couldn't get it out, and for like two days straight, I was trying to get this thing out of my eye, and I couldn't do so, and it was driving me crazy, and then I kept rubbing and splashing water on my eye, and like, going in the shower, and just having spray, I was doing everything, blowing my nose, I was, anything you could possibly think of, I was trying to do to get this thing out of my eye, and it was, I think it was more than two days, it might have been three or four days, and I just couldn't function, and the problem is, I was convinced there was something in my eye, and I kept rubbing it worse and worse, which meant I went to an eye doctor, after longer than I probably should have, but eventually I had to go to the eye doctor. He sat me down, he did his like microscope stuff, and he's like, you have a corneal tear, which means, practically speaking, pause, which means, practically speaking, that I have some sort of tear along my eye, which is that I do not actually have something in my eye, but rather my eye has a slight tear to it, and every time I try to get the thing out of my eye, what I'm actually doing is I'm actually irritating it more and more, so what, the, what I'm trying to do to fix the problem is making it worse. I'm like rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, and it's like, it won't go out, it's just, it's just irritating the tear, and it's not great. And there's apparently, like, there might be things you can do about it, but like, the all-expensive surgery, or this or that, and he's like, realistically, just don't mess with it. It'll heal, and then once in a while it might act up, and when it does, just give it the give it the space to breathe. Don't rub it like so it's getting all irritated, just let it exist. And so in the past four, five years, however long it's been, maybe four or five times it's been like reacts, and like it'll pop up and like, you know, I don't know, once a year, once a year and a half, whatever it is, it'll pop up here and there. And what it does is, it's specifically one eye, so I know, and the problem is, the tricky part is, I, it always feels like there's something in my eye. And sometimes, sometimes there's something in your eye. By the way, I think I thought this guy was this guy, but newly done. This guy's just a different guy, so he's not the old phoenix. We got the old phoenix. Anyways, so I think that... Is this the larger base? This is the larger base. I was so excited for the larger base character, and this is not the larger base... I mean, this is a larger base character, but I was hoping for something like even bigger than this. Now we got our, our phoenix in there. Oh, wait, is it not going in? Now, I was warned that some of these sculpts are still being tweaked as far as how they fit into these holes, oh, but this does fit. I didn't break it. I might break it when I try to pull it off. I like, I'm like worried to break this on camera, but nope, nope, did it. These ones feel pretty hefty. Like, they feel like they're made to last. I wasn't too worried there. I was a little worried, but not too worried. Anyways, so when, like, sometimes I will actually get things in my eyes. And the tricky part there is, how do I know? If it's this eye, I know it's something in my eye. If it's this eye, I'm like... Is it the corneal tear or is it something in my eye? And so I have to play around for a bit, being very soft, very, very gentle. Like, I'll rub it a bit and it will, it will adjust it. Like, uh, touching the eye will adjust it a little bit. But if you rub it too hard, you're just irritating and making it worse. So there's that delicate balance as you go through things. But the tricky part is it acted up a few days ago. Manticores! It acted up a few days ago. And so I've been kind of dealing with that remnant after effects in the meantime of just like... Uh, it's still present, it takes a few days to heal, it needs a little bit of like, sometimes I find extra sleep will help, but that's not happening. Anyways, we got our manticore over here. Manticore. Now I do know, and I'm fully aware, that when I sit there and say something like, hey, extra sleep will help this health problem I have, and then I laugh it off with a casual, that's not happening, I recognize completely and totally, I don't always, I only recognize because it took me a while to recognize this. At first I thought it was like funny, like look at me being all like, you know, funny about how I don't care about my health. And then... I recognize over time because of the care and concern that sometimes you will show that, and I appreciate it, by the way, thank you very much. I recognize over time that me being casual and cavalier about my health isn't great. And it's not that I'm disregarding my health, and it's not that I don't know my own boundaries. In my opinion, I know my own boundaries. I, I won't know if I'm right, unfortunately, until I go too far, but in my opinion, I do know my own boundaries of how much sleep I need, how far to push myself, how much work I'm getting done, how much stuff I'm taking on. In my opinion, I know I know where I can push and get things done, not hurt my, 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 my health, not hurt my personal life. All those factors are in play. But I appreciate the concern. And when I say something like, that's not going to happen about the sleep, if I need sleep, I do actually go to sleep. Uh, sometimes there are times when I sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to get eight hours of sleep tonight. And I recognize that some of you are like, that's your version of taking it easy. It is for me. I usually get mine five or six hours of sleep a night. So when I am feeling a little bit down, I'm like, I will get eight. And if I'm really sick... Like, when I had COVID, I was like, nine or ten hours, like, please, I need it all, give it to me. So I do recognize when to actually let myself rest a bit and, and process and, and get what I need uh, from health, from sleep, from rest. It's just that usually I do push myself, and usually I think I have a good indicator to myself 
of how far I can push myself without it causing issues. And when I'm wrong, we'll find out. Anyways, this Toad guy, I don't remember him from the last game, he might be new stuff. Look at his back. He needs to see a doctor. Sleep's not going to fix that. That is, that is, I like the guy. I like the miniatures. They're phenomenal miniatures. They're just well done. Although I will say, there's definitely no dragon in here. And yes, I am upset about that. Although he's gotten bigger. He's the stream caller. I think. I think he's the stream caller. Now in my head. Phone. Phone back out. Stream caller. Wild Ascent. Stream caller. Caller. Wild Ascent. Let's make sure it's the right thingy. Images. Will he be there? Um, I'm not confident. I mean, this guy pops up. This guy does pop up in a picture. So here we go. So like, just to show you over here. When I Googled it, it popped up in the picture over there. But I don't know if that actually is the stream crawler or not. That's just me just like saying, hey, he does clearly pop up in a picture. I'm clicking on the article. Let's go ahead and find it out. Wild Scent Minis Unboxed. Okay, the Phoenix. Oh, it probably is the stream crawler. I got it. I got it. Okay, so I'm one for two. Zaxos is not his name. Or was it Zaxos? Darn it. Now I can't remember which fake name, which is a fake name, which is a real name. Grax, Graxos? Zaxos? I can't remember his name anymore. Anyways, stream caller. He's gotten significantly bigger. Again, this is where if you have the original miniatures over here, like this is like the scope and scale. You know what? Honestly, honestly, hold up. We can do this. Wild Ascent. This is not going to be my miniatures box. You know that because it's on its side. I am not crazy. I'm just irresponsible. There's a difference. This will be my miniatures box. I guess. Is, these, is this all the miniatures? Let's find out. Dun, dun. I probably should have had that box on the table the whole time. Would have made the whole unboxing look better. But here we go. We got our... These things are just... Let's find this guy over here. Whose name is uh, Thanos or something. Not Thanos. His name is like something like Tharkos or some version of that. But we need to find him in here. So you're going to have to bear with me. Bear with me. While I find the miniature that I want to show you in the box. I'm pretty sure he's in here because I don't know where else he'd be if he's not out in the box. I did find Zaxos if we don't find him. I'm just going to use Zaxos. Is his name Zaxos anymore? I don't know. Oh, I found him. I found him. We got him. I mean, do I care? Let's use Zaxos. Why not? Let's use Zaxos. I like Zaxos. I looked for the miniature. I found the miniature. And then I proceeded to ignore that I found the miniature. So, size comparison basis. So, we have Zaxos over here. I think that's his name. I've already forgotten. Zaxos, old and new, in terms of the size comparison, certainly has a step up. You can see the difference in color, obviously. But this is the two miniatures over here. Okay? Then, we have the stream collar. Size comparison has definitely moved up a notch. And so, for comparison purposes... What we have is we have, let's see if I can get these all on camera properly, holding them in whatever way I can. So we have these are the characters as far as what you have over here. We have a slight size difference in Zach, so it's very, very slight. And the stream call is like, hey, 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 buddy, I'm going to wreck you. I'm going to wreck you hard. And so we're going to go ahead and put this back here. Let's take a look at the Phoenix. The Phoenix is taking a nice, nice, oh, I like, I like it. It's better. It's better. This is the thing. If you are someone who upgraded your Wild Sun Pledge in any way, shape, or form, if you have all this stuff or whatever it is, you are getting something that is cooler. I should probably sell my Wild Ascent while I still can. <laughs> Although I probably shouldn't, because honestly, and this is where uh, I love Lazy Squire, I do, but they take their time with their games, and if I want to have the chance of playing Wild Ascent in the near future at all, I probably should not sell my copy of Wild Ascent. All right, now that we've done that comparison, we can put this back over here. I'll timestamp that comparison so that you know where to hop to, which is incredibly useless, because I probably should have told the people at the beginning that I timestamped the comparison. You already watched it. All right. Well, now we have that over there. Probably should have had the box on the table. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Just thumbnail stuff. No, I don't do the smile. It's so weird. I don't do full open smiles. I don't... I mean, I do sometimes. I don't really do... I, like, I'm, I'm fine with, like, like... I smile. I do smile. I just don't smile with, like, open tea smile as much. I have to be, like, happy to do that. I'm generally happy. I have to be particularly happy to do that. I have to be like more in a, in a general like, I don't know, just a vibe. I have to be like feeling it. Also, there's no dragon here, so I'm not feeling it at all because I want the freaking dragon back. I had to send my dragon on. I covered Wild Ascent. I got this incredibly cool sun drop dragon, and then I uh, had to send it to the next person, and I'm still sad about that. We have this guy over here. This is also a baddie, but I don't remember this one's name. But it's cool. Look at the detail. I mean, it makes it a pain to paint, but 
if you're willing to like sun drop it or shade or any of those things, then you're good to go. We got over here, we got this over here situation. Bam, bam. Oh, this guy, what's he called? Thorn. I want to say his name is something to do with Thorn, but I can't remember. Thorn Watch or Thorn. I, I'm sure the name Thorn is in there. Look at this guy. Look at him. And he's larger too, by the way. He is definitely larger. And he's definitely going to... Oh, look at his little babies. Look at his little babies. By the way, he's the one that has these as his little babies. So he actually has three versions of the spawn. He's got him. He's got the spawn on his base. And he's got the slightly grown up spawn that has crept out from his base. And is now going... And attacking you. These are cool stuff over here. Ooh, that felt a little weak. Nope, we're fine. This is my problem. This is my problem. I, I like feel something weak and I'm like, let's just flick it and see if it breaks. That's how I solve problems in life. Anyways, we got this guy who's got some nice little, ooh, interesting. We're going to hold on to this one for a second. We got, we got surprises. That'll timestamp, I guess. So telling you for the future in some way, but it's too late now. If you made it this far into the video, you're clearly invested. We got this guy over here. Okay, we got this guy who's pretty cool. We got this guy who's pretty cool. Oh, oh, stuff is dropping, stuff is dropping. We got some more stuff over here, and then I think we're done. Oh, we got another little spawn flower dude. We saw him earlier, so we're not going to talk about him. Again, there's some people that generate stuff, and there's the ones that generate. Ooh, look at this. So, we got a Cthulhu-esque little guy. This guy actually looks like one of the miniatures from Cthulhu that may die. I don't know what the call, but it looks like one of those like guys that shamble in from the water, like the deep ones or something. And then we have this guy over here, who is a spider. Not large, not overly large, but definitely something you have to deal with and engage with. And look at that. Is that a body? That's a body! She's got a body wrapped up! That's Frodo! We found Frodo! That's pretty cool. Then we have two larger guys over here, and I think we're done with the box. No freaking dragon. Unbelievable. Okay, which one of these is cooler? Well, this one you've seen before. This one's new, I think, if I recall. So, this one, he's back. He's bigger than ever. He's more of a rhino. He's just got more heft and weight to him, and he's definitely a baddie. If you need that base, like, if you need that red base to tell you this is the bad guy, I mean, I guess it's fair, because isn't this a bad guy? Isn't this a bad guy? I'm, like, putting these guys on the good guy side. These are bad guys. They're monsters. They're just, like, it's a phoenix. So, like, it's a good monster, right? That's where my head's at. No, they're bad guys. You have to kill them and capture them and slaughter them and harvest their organs. And this guy's got a hole through the middle. Oh, I love it. Okay, so let's show you this guy over here. Okay. This is the guy over here. And you can see it. And then, if you line up just right, you can see that hole right through the middle of his body. I love that. I love that. It's completely unnecessary. But it's a hole through the body. Look at that. There, like, now we get a gray. Look, gray. Look at that. I don't know why, but it's just that's kind of like the guy with the missing arms. It's just it's just enough character in class to be like, I love that. And miniature painters are like, really, I have to paint the freaking hole? Honestly, with a small paintbrush, shouldn't it be that hard? Eyes are still harder. And then lastly, I'm showing you this guy because, and you're like, why? This guy's not that cool. Well, the reason I'm showing you this guy is because in addition to this guy, they also sent this guy. So now you have an idea of what the sun drop shading will look like. So that may or may not be for you. Definitely provides more depth to the character. The color is a big color change over here. Also, I'm going to try the base in a second to see if the base fits. And again, I, I vaguely recall that I may have been told that some things don't fit the way they're supposed to yet, and they're being tweaked. I vaguely recall that as being a thing. I don't remember if that's the case over here, so we're going to find out on camera. And that way, when it does or doesn't work, if it does work, it's great. And if it doesn't work, I did warn you, but also, okay, it's definitely a degree of push to fit over here. Will it go in? There we go. So it does go in perfectly. It clips, it clips in. That's definitely true. And you might leave these on. Depends how many bases you have. You may just leave these on just fine. But like this is what it'll look on the table over there. Focus. Ta -da. And then we're going to go ahead and do we have a good guy? We have a good guy who sun dropped. So we got this guy over here. And this guy's got his own matching dude over here. So we have a good guy and a bad guy. Sun dropped and shaded. We can take a look at. Look at them. I, I do like the level of detail that it brings out of the miniature. Like look. That is so cool. But we are going to go ahead and clip on a base because we must try for science. Small base. Small base on this guy. And let's see if it works. Again, I'm testing stuff that I may... I don't remember what I was warned does and doesn't work. But this one clipped on pretty easily. This one went out easily, which means we have them down over here. Which means now, if you're looking at your two guys on the table, again, so the problem is you can't see facing as well. Like, you can see it a bit. But I think those need to be a drop bigger and they wouldn't mess up the battlefield immersion. So again, I don't know if it's too late to do that. I hope it's not. 
But these are your guys. These are your, your guys. These are your Wild Ascent miniatures. You're going to get Sun Drop Dragons and all kinds of fun things. But this is your Wild Ascent unboxing of the, uh, I think the um, Masters. The Masters, I think is what it's called. Um, I'm not, probably should have read more stuff before I did this video. This is Wild Ascent. These are the miniatures you can expect to see. Uh, Late Pledges close July 15th. This is a game I really enjoy. You can check out my previous opinions of the game. My opinion of the game has not changed, which is worth mentioning too, because sometimes opinions change over time. I love this game. It's not going anywhere. I'm not even willing to sell it right now because, sure, I might get 100 bucks back for it, but then I might not be able to play it for a year. I don't know how long it's going to be until the final game comes. I don't know. And will it be six months? I don't know. Will it be a year and a half? I just don't know. Um, and I know they mean well. I know they're doing their best, but ultimately they do have a track record of putting out games that are delayed. So there is that to take into account. So take that into account as you back, as you move forward with this. I do think this is a cool game. Oh, oh, I should do this as well. I apologize. I should have done this at the beginning of the video. In light of the amount of things that are going wrong in the crowdfunding space, in light of the amount of times publishers are, you know, unfortunately having to close up shop or you're seeing things close. And to be clear, the amount of times is still a very small number. It's still around 1%, maybe 2% of, of situations going south. And many of those times, like, it's like, hey, extra money instead of actually going south-south. And so that's, it's... It's both a very small portion of the board game space, but also I want to make sure that you're aware and mindful of the decisions you make, because at the end of the day, I am here doing a video that might influence you to buy things, and while I do like this game and recommend this game, it may not be a game for you, and even if it is a game for you, you may have to deal with either waiting a certain amount of time or possibly not getting it. Those are things that are possibilities. I am not personally concerned about whether Wild Ascent Levon Rising will deliver. I believe it will deliver, but I said this in a previous video, and I'm going to keep saying it, my belief does not translate into your financial security. So take that, into, take that all that with a grain of salt, uh, back responsibly, don't spend money you can't afford to lose, this is an expensive game to begin with, I think it's an expensive game that's worth it, and I enjoy it very much and recommend it, but still expensive and always a risk associated. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.